In this video, I'll be showing you how to get started with Adafruit's Pi Portal using a Mac. The Pi Portal is a CircuitPython power display for IoT projects. That's how Adafruit builds it at least. But what does all that mean? Well, CircuitPython is derived from MicroPython, which is a leaner version of regular Python and it's used to program microcontroller boards similar to an Arduino. CircuitPython is targeted at beginners or students, so it's perfect for those of us just getting started. The Pi Portal itself features a processor, memory, sensors, connectors, and a touchscreen all in one package. I'll be highlighting some of the board's features, but if you want more information, check the description below for links. Here's the processor and onboard memory. You get 8 megabytes onboard. This is the Wi-Fi coprocessor. Here we have the onboard temperature sensor, and there's an ambient light sensor on the front. There's a micro SD card for additional storage. The board has an onboard speaker and speaker connector. Here are the connectors for the board. We have a 4-pin JST I2C connector, and two 3-pin JST digital or analog connectors. There's also a status light and a NeoPixel, a micro USB port for connecting to your computer or power, and finally the reset button. The first thing we will do is download and install the latest version of CircuitPython. I'd encourage you to do this often as it is updated regularly. Let's open our browser and go to circuitpython.org and click on Downloads. Find PyPortal and click on it. From the drop-down list, select your language and then click the download button. Connect your Pi Portal to your computer and it should boot up. Press the reset button twice. You should now see a removable disk called Portal Boot. Drag and drop the file we just downloaded to it. Once the copy is complete, the Pi Portal should reboot with the updated firmware and a removable disk named CircuitPy should show up. The bootout.txt file will tell you what version of the firmware is running. You can use any standard text editor to write your scripts, but the Mu editor is what I will be showing here. Not only is it promoted in the Adafruit documentation, but it's also a nice, clean, and easy-to-use editor targeted at beginners. In your web browser, go to codewith.mu and click on the download button. Click the button for the version you'd like to download. Once finished downloading, open the installer, then drag and drop it to your Applications folder. Launch Mu, and when prompted, select Adafruit Circuit Python mode. Now your Pi Portal might have come preloaded with an app, but mine did not, so we will start with the classic Hello World example. Enter the code as you see it on the screen and then click the check button. If there are any errors, they will be highlighted so you can fix them before uploading to your device. Click the save button, select CircuitPython drive and name the file code.py. The Pi Portal should reboot and display Hello World on the screen. This highlights one of the nicest features of working with the Pi Portal. Every time you save your file, it will automatically reboot and run your code. Now for something more interesting, we will install the Adafruit Quotes project onto the Pi Portal. In the description below is a link to the project. Download it, extract the files and copy them to your Pi Portal. Launch Mu again and then open both code.py and secrets.py. In the secrets file is where we define our wireless network name and login details as well as any other sensitive information our program might need. By keeping such details in a single location, it makes it easier to update them and gives us peace of mind when sharing code with others. When you upload a project or share it with someone else, just be sure to remove your personal credentials from the secrets file. Back in code.py, the top section imports some libraries that we will be using. Data source is the web-based API endpoint that the quotes are pulled from. If you open the URL in your web browser, you can see what it looks like. Depending on your browser, you may see either a raw version of the data or a pretty formatted version. Each time you load the page, you will receive a new quote. Quote location and author location define where the data we want is located in the JSON object. CWD is a variable to where our current directory is on the Pi Portal to reference fonts and graphics. Pi Portal is where the real meat of the program is. It takes the URL we looked at earlier, the Pi Portal's NeoPixel to act as a status indicator, the default background image, the font to use to display text, positions for both our quote text and author name, the color for that text, how we want that text wrapped, and the max length of the text. Next, we preload the font. Finally, this is the main application loop. This is a process that will repeat indefinitely as long as there is power and no errors are encountered. Here we try to tell Python to fetch the data. If there are errors, this will happen. If not, then the screen will update and on the serial console you can see the response printed out. After 60 seconds, the loop repeats. A note. To be safe, when you are done editing code on your Pi Portal, be sure to eject it properly instead of just unplugging it. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, please do so for future videos. Additionally, if you like topics like this one, check out my secondary channel, Basement Maker Tech, there's a link below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.